In my last video, we survived as long as we could on Spice Islands, using only the land, and the setup we ended up with was pretty insane. In this video, as per popular request, we're doing the exact opposite, surviving as long as we can using only the water on the map logs. Now, there are several other maps that you could choose for this challenge that would also be very fun. Infernal, Middle of the Road, Resort, Winter Park, Carved, and the list just goes on and on. There's so many maps with mostly land but a bit of water, just what you want for this type of challenge. So there's a lot of fun versions on this, and the reason I chose logs was simply because I already had a recording of me doing it. The gameplay is actually 3-4 to four weeks old back in update 35.2, but I ended up not making a video on it for some reason. When we did the only land challenge, we did not allow ice monkeys to freeze the water because that just ruins the fun in the challenge and basically makes the whole map into land. But when we're doing the opposite and only allowing water and we only have a very small amount of it, using ice monkeys will be allowed since that enriches the challenge and makes it better. It allows us to create a lot more variations on the setups and makes us think more about the strategy without making it too easy or ruining the challenge since we're still very limited on space. So for this challenge we're gonna go with Isili as our hero, and we started the game by getting one of each boat path, starting with getting the bottom path tier 5 to get our farming going, and we also got a top path sub to decamo and reduce ability cooldowns. Next we got the carrier flagship, and we won't place Isili yet, because we want to use both spots for towers that will increase our income. We'll get an elite sniper, and then after getting our pirate lord and energizer, we'll upgrade the jungle bounty to the spirit of the forest. The pirate lord's hooking ability gives 100% extra cash for every blimp hooked in, so we will use it as much as we can, which is a lot since the energizer lowers the ability cooldown for water towers by 50% compared to the 20% for land towers. Also, I must say that I am pretty happy that I found this gameplay because this week I'm pretty busy, so not having to record any new gameplay for this video was a pretty nice time save. On round 128, we ran into some problems with fortified DDTs, but if we sell the Sniper and the Energizer, we can now afford the Nav Arc, and now of course all our problems are gone, and will be for a good while, because this thing will shred through everything. Next, we'll place Isili on the Nav Arc before we get the carrier flagship next to it, because otherwise, when the two platforms overlap, you might only be able to use one of them. So we'll use one of the carrier flagship platform for the elite sniper again, and the other for a grand sabo to start farming pops for our ninja paragon. Now that we have all that set up, all we need to do is use our abilities constantly to increase the amount of pops we get for the paragon and the amount of money that we make. At round 192, we sell the sniper and druid to make space to create the ninja paragon, and then we get our farming towers back and repeat. The reason I did not make a video out of this gameplay might have been because it was more of a test run that I wanted to optimize further before turning it into a video. So you're probably able to get higher degrees for the Paragons than I did here, and maybe also optimize the setup even further in other ways, but as I mentioned I got a bit too much to do this week to not make use of this gameplay. On round 228, after farming for a while, we sell our moneymakers and the Sealy to make room for 3 boomerang monkeys. We'll need to reposition the carrier flagship since the platforms were overlapping, and now we will be farming pops for a while. On round 250, we get the Glaive Dominus, and now we're starting to run out of space. We'll get Isili and the Grand Sabo for our last two land towers on the carrier flagship, and then the Energizer below. And now our setup is complete. We ran into some trouble at round 286 when there were just way too many bads and I sold my Energizer and Sabo, and I got an Ice Platform for the Legend of the Night, which solved the problem, but the very next round could not be beaten with this setup. The reduced cooldown from the Energizer is better than the damage from the Legend of the Night, since it reduces Isili's cooldown, so we sold the Legend of the Night and got the Energizer back along with the Grand Sabo. On round 290, we got more problems again. Now we have to sell and rebuy Isili to spam her hex ability to pass the tough rounds. And eventually, on round 296, we get stopped in our tracks, because at this point, we have no more money left to play with, and there's just too many bad balloons. I think round 300 is a nice goal for this challenge, which is probably why I did not upload this before, but I'll leave it to you to beat 300 rounds on this challenge. 
Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and don't forget to check out the one we did on Spice Islands if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one.